The other five presents Mr. Sammy Davis Jr. in Death of an Old Flame. The name's Warren, Ronnie Warren. I play piano. I play in what they call piano bar. That's where they tear the top of a baby grand and build a counter all the way around for the jerks to put their drinks in. Not joint, but with a rug on the floor and a man at the door and a cigarette girl who in her heart believes she wouldn't be here except for the money. I must have played back and forth across the country a dozen times. Never the top spot. But never the dive. I work. Keep the piano, too. Hey, uh, Ronnie, a lady uh, wants to hear a song. That's Leo. He owns this place. Not a bad guy as owners go, but still an owner. I look up at the chick at the far end of the piano. She smiles. I smile. Slow and shy, like a boy fresh out of college. She eats it up. She says uh, she'd like to hear Stardust. Yeah, that figures. You see, she even uh, wrote it out for you. Tell her that looks more like a telephone number to me, will you? I guess she wants you to call her. Tell her I never learned how to use a phone. Ronnie, she's a customer. Yeah, I know. So I smile at her again, like we're both college sophomores. And this is our first date. But she's a chick like any other, pulled into an expensive dress for a night on the town. A local princess who thinks she deserves better than she's got. Better than the second-hand car in a garage and television every night. Better than the guy she came in with. Better than anything she'll ever have. For a moment, the piano player in the downtown club is better. And that piano player is me. And she'll settle for that. All right, tell her I get off at two, will you? Okay. I wonder how she'll ditch the guy. She'll find a way if she has to. Dames are like that. Hey, what about the guys, Ronnie? How come you never got your face caved in? Huh? Not a chance. Those red-blooded all-American boys always figure a piano player for a patsy. That is, until it's too late. After banging these beat-up keyboards for 15 years, Leo, if I get a grip on a guy, I can bust his arm. So why didn't you tell me before I lost a day's profits Indian wrestling with you? <laughs> it's a trade secret for piano players on the make. But the chicks, well, they've got their secrets too. If they get close enough, they can bust more than your arm. One thing I've learned is never to trust a chick. Never even giving them even break. Now that when they're smiling at her date, see? She'll be here later, and I'll take her home. And something better doesn't show up. Tell me, Ronnie, how do you do it? It's my boyish charm. <laughs> my boyish charm. That's a joke around the saloons. I'm 35 and I still look like I should be in college. Some guys say that's why I score so often. But really, it's the way I play the piano. I play like I'm in another world. When I look up, I always smile. Like I'm pleasantly surprised that such beautiful music could find itself in the presence of such excellent company. I smile this way whether I'm looking at a wall, the bartender, a crying drunk, or the chick I'm working on at the moment. And out of all of them, only the chicks are vain enough to take it personally. Excuse me, please, but would you mind playing? I get along without you very well. I don't play that number. You used to. I hadn't seen her come in. I swung around to see what the voice told me I would find. Her face was right at my shoulder. The eyes were still incredibly blue. So deep and blue that you had to look twice to believe what you saw. Hello, Ronnie. She smiled. And somebody took a clean blade and dumped my insides on the floor. There was nothing left inside but an aching hurt. I turned back to the piano because I was afraid she would see me trembling. Hello, Anna. Mind if I sit down? Yeah, go ahead. Long time no see. Five and a half years, to be exact. I didn't keep track. Will you buy me a drink? I don't buy drinks. Customers. She sat like she was suddenly very tired and toyed with her gloves for a moment, the way she used to. Her mouth was the way I remembered it. And her hair was still soft and gold. 
Then I noticed there was a hole in one of the fingers of a glove and the dress was last year's style. I signaled the bartender to bring her a drink. Thanks. I, um... I read in the papers you were playing here. I kept track of you through the papers. Where you been when you hit town? I would have kept in touch, but when I got back that night, all I could find was an empty hotel room. You know, you didn't leave much of a forwarding address. I know that was wrong. I've been sorry a million times, honey. Did you, um... I never heard. Did you marry again? When the man said, until death do us part. I figured he meant it. Right. Well, the marriage bit comes in handy. You know, when a chick screams, hey, marry me. I just say, I'd love the baby, but I'm already married. <laughs> Saves me a lot of scenes. How about you? No. Frankie, leave you for somebody else? No, he won't marry me. You're still with him? Yes. Oh. Ronnie? Play our song. You heard me. I don't play that song. Please, honey. I haven't heard it in a long time. Do something I forgot how it goes. I don't believe that. Please, honey. Once more. For old time's sake. What's the pitch? You just don't run out and then pile up six years later for nothing. What do you want? I need help. What kind of help? Frank's flat. They don't have a cent. Okay, what do you want me to do? Lend him money? No. What? He knows where he can make a score. He figures if he can make one good score, he can leave town and start all over again. What score? Frank knows that there's a half a million in furs just waiting to be picked up. It's an inside job. He'd handle it all himself, except... He'd be the first one they'd suspect. All you'd have to do is help me load the truck and drive. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wow, let me, let me get this straight. You want me to help you make a heist so that you can have enough money to take your boyfriend Frankie someplace else where you and he can live happily ever after? Well, you'd get half. The last thing I want, Anna, is your money. Oh, Ronnie, please. I, I know I shouldn't ask you, but there's no place I can turn. There's, there's no one else I can trust. Sat there jamming the frailness of one white knuckle against the softness of one red lip. And I wanted to take her in my arms and tell her everything will be all right. But when she said... Please, Ronnie, just this once. I heard myself say... Okay, Anna. Just this once. Yeah, like for old times' sake. <laughs> Just once, for old times' sake. I must have been crazy. Sure, I was crazy. Yeah, about her. Why else would a bright guy who had never done a crooked thing in his life find himself on a robbery? Well, when I got to work that night, I talked to Leo. Leo, I have some business from 10 to 12 tonight. I, I'd like out. It's important. It's so important that if anybody should ask, I'd be obliged if you say I spent the time sleeping off a hangover in your office couch. Okay. But, uh, let me give you a little piece of advice. Like, like, I don't want to know, but if this important business has anything to do with the broad I saw you talking to last night, I'd watch my step. What? That's Frankie Amato's girl. Yeah, like I know. No, you don't know. He's a killer. <laughs> You made it? Yeah, Leo will cover for me. Okay, where to? Just drive straight down the street. I drove as she directed. So we pulled up behind a row of stores. I'll open the garage door. Back the truck inside. She had a key to the place where I did it, I was told. Okay, now what? Help me get the face off these racks. Don't you want to hang them up or, or something? No, there's no time. Just throw them in the truck. Look, I don't know anything about furs, but this doesn't look like a half a million dollars worth oh, of fur to me. Quiet and hurry. Okay, that's it. 
Let's go. Hey, what are you doing? Help me spread this stuff around, will you? What for? It's cleaning fluid. We're going to set fire to the place. What for? To burn the evidence. Frank says we have to destroy all the evidence. Think about a fire. Well, I, I was afraid you wouldn't go through with it if I did. Of course I wouldn't. Look, taking these furs are one thing, but arson is something else. Somebody could get killed. But we have to. Frank is playing cards with the guy that owns this place. We have to fix his alibi with the time of the fire. All that matters is Frank and his alibi, isn't it? No. What happens if a cop walks through that door right now, Anna? What kind of alibi does Frank have ready for you? That doesn't matter. No, all that matters is Frank is safe. That he's got somebody to lie for him, to steal for him. And what for, Anna? What does he do for you? Oh, please, Ronnie. Answer me, Anna. What does he do for you? Nothing. Then why do you stay with I him? I don't know. Tell me one thing, Anna. Do you love him? No. I love you, Anna. Oh, Ronnie, please. I never stopped. Every time I hit, every place I went, I walked the places we used to walk. I sang the songs we used to sing. Ronnie, please, we've got to get out of here. We could call him here right now and never come back. We could start all over again from the beginning. Make it like it was before, only better. A hundred times Ronnie, better. Ronnie, please. Come on, Anna, what do you say? We could do it. We could give it a try. Ronnie, we can't talk about it now. There isn't time. We've got to finish this and get out of here. The answer's no. Ronnie, please. Help me with this one thing and I'll never ask again as long as I live. Ronnie, please. Please. All right, I'll do it. On one condition. What's that? And after it's over, you come away with me and never see Frank again. Well? Okay, Ronnie, whatever you say. I'll only... Only let's get it over with. All right, give me that can. Slice it down here. And into the office. Frank wants the whole place to burn. Okay, but the, the field is so strong you can hardly breathe. No. Throw it over everything. The desk, the walls, the filing cabinet, everything. Hey, wait a minute. This is Frank's office, isn't it? No. No? And why is this letter addressed to Frank Amato? Look, this is Frank's office. He wants this place to burn for a reason. Now, what is this? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Level with me, Anna. What's going on? Stay away from me, Ronnie. You haven't leveled with me since the day we don't met. Don't touch me. You heard the lady. Piano player. Keep your hands off her. Yeah. Yeah, I heard her. They tell me you're very nice about answering requests by pretty dames, but just in case you feel like improvising... This gun I got is pretty good at calling the tune. Yeah, Daddy, that breaks the whole medley. Oh, play it too cool, piano player. You know how big a hole a forty-five makes? No, but if you hum a few bars, maybe I can fake it. Tell me we had company. Now, offhand, I'd say you're Frank. You are a bright college boy. Real bright. Well, if this is a shakedown, I'm afraid you got the wrong party. I'm broke. This ain't penny ante stuff. This is big money. I don't get it. You ever heard of insurance, college boy? No, I don't carry it. Yeah? Well, I do. I insured myself. Alive, I ain't worth a dime. Dead, I'm worth 50 grand. Now, that's a fair piece of change. And Anna here's my only beneficiary. I still don't know how this figures. I mean, unless you want me to help you commit suicide. Oh, suicides don't collect. Besides, I wouldn't die for any dame that's strictly for suckers like you. I still don't read you. Nobody's going to commit suicide. I'm going to be murdered. Like I say, the melody's familiar, but so far the lyrics don't rhyme. Then I thought you was a bright college boy. I told the boss I was working late at the shop tonight. The police will think I left the door unlocked. Somebody found it open, tied me to my chair, took all the furs and burned the place to destroy me and the evidence. Now, while the police are sifting through your remains, I will be in Mexico, where Anna will join me after she's had sufficient time to recover from her grief and uh, collect the insurance money. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only one thing wrong with that song, Frank. Nobody would confuse me with you. <laughs> Have you ever tried to identify a man after he's been soaked with cleaning fluid and with a match? Mm hmm. Now, you always wanted to take my place, college boy. Now you got it. Sit down in my chair. Okay, Frank, you got the argument. Throw me the rope, Anna. Take this gun. If he even looks like he's going to move, blast him. Yes, Anna, blast him. For old time's sake. Ronnie. I... Shut up. 
Now, college boy, sit down. Sit down. Shut up. Put your hands out in front of you. Okay, Frank. But watch the hands. Like they're delicate. I make my living with them. You won't have to worry about that anymore. Just give me the hand. Sure. Like this. All right. All right, now on your knees, Frankie. Face the Anna. Shoot, Anna. Shoot. No, Anna. I can break his neck. Believe me. Say, please, Anna. Shoot. I can't. Kill him, Anna. Kill him. I can't. I might hit you. All right, Anna. You just put that gun down, see? And back into the hall. Oh. Do what I say, Anna. I can kill him with my hands if I want to. You know something? I'm starting to worry. Oh, Anna, no. Let's, let's put up his arm a little bit. Oh, a little bit. Just a fence. Anna, Anna. Don't like he says. Don't like he says. Now, now that's better. You just put uh. that gun on the table and back up into the hall. If Frankie will excuse us. I'm going to put him away for a minute. We have something to talk about, you and me, privately. What did you do to him? Just a chop on the neck. Enough to put him out for a while. You killed him. No, but maybe I wish I had. Now, come on. No, I'm not going with you. Come on, hurry. No. You're coming with me, whether you like it or not. Now, come on. Oh, my arm. We're getting out of here. Frank is hurt. He needs me. Frank's sick. And I need you. Go, let go of me. Come on. Through this door. Uh, uh, it's bolted. We gotta get out of here. Frank's coming and he's got the gun. We gotta get out. We gotta blow that place up if he finds that gun with these gas fumes. Come back here! Frank! Through this door! Come back here! Go this boy! Frank! Come on, let's get out of here! Oh, we, we can't leave him. He'll burn alive. Too late. We can't help him now. Oh, Ronnie, let me go to him. Anna, you can't go in there. Frank! I'm coming, Frank! Anna! Come back, Anna! Come back! Ronnie, I see here in the paper where my old friend Frank Amato met with a fatal accident. He pined to death in the first storage place. Was that so? Yeah, it happened last night, but I uh, guess you wouldn't know anything about it, would you? No, I guess I wouldn't. I didn't think so. The way the cops figure it, he was trying to rob the place where he worked and then burn the store to cover his tracks, and somehow he touched it off ahead of time. Burned him and the girl that was with him. There was a girl? Yeah. It could have been the one that was in here last night. Hard to tell from what was left. It's too bad. Yeah, and that's the way I thought you'd feel. Hey, uh, don't look now, but I think you got a customer coming your way. I think I'll check the bar. Thanks, Leo. I knew what was coming. Not even looking, I knew. Do you know Stardust? I had to struggle to keep him choking. Do I know Stardust? Now I looked up slow and shy and smiled like a college kid on his first day. My Stardust? That's a beautiful song about a beautiful girl. I was hoping you'd ask. Thank you. Hey, the pleasure's mine. <laughs> I've been listening to you. You play very well. Thank you. It's been a long time since anyone said that. You know, most people just drink and pretend to listen. But not you. You're, you're different. Kind of special. Mm -hmm. For a special girl, I want to play a special number. Not just something ordinary like Stardust. Oh, that's nice. What's it called? Let's just call it our song, huh? Five has presented Death of an Old Flame, starring Mr. Sammy Davis, Jr., written by George Bamber, directed by Warren Somerville. Featured in the cast, Joan Lovejoy, Bernard Grant, Ralph Bell, and Evelyn Juster. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. 
Executive producer for Theater 5, Mr. Lee Bowman. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. That's Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.